I'm not really David, I'm Patrick, but I need David's slides. Which brings me to first to say thank you to Joe for this uh, wonderful opportunity, and to Paul, who has no idea who I am and thinks it's a good idea for me to be here. It's questionable, nonetheless. The next thing I must do is apologize, not to you, but to David Rendamonte, because uh, I have the ability, perhaps, to bastardize anyone's presentation. Of course, bastardize is an interesting word, because bastardize, as you'll see through the presentation, can be interchanged with the word innovation. And it'll be up to you to determine whether or not I have achieved the goal I set out. Slides, good. David Rendamonte, yeah. I could, of course, just say, hi, I'm David Rendamonte, and anything after this goes from here. There are four things I want to highlight before I start uh, into David's presentation, which we've adapted a small bit. And just to highlight four comments of the speakers that uh, have preceded. The first is from Peter, which basically has indicated that, the, that most new products that are going to appear over the next number of years are biotechnology products. This is a statement of fact. Secondly, Paul has indicated that we are going to have to shift from a primary care to a specialty model. And you go, yes, that makes sense, given that all the products are going to be specialty products. Ron has indicated that the key to success will remain our ability to have relationships with our key customers. And Vince has indicated that our customer audience is shifting, and we will have to ensure that we individualize our communications to each of these different customer audiences. Excellent. So there's a tab here, I'm sure, and click. Which brings us to the first question, and uh, basically support education, CME advocacy. Is the traditional model still viable? Ooh, ah, keys go interesting, interesting. So, well, 42 of you say yes, it is um, still viable, and 50 say uh, not really viable at all. So let's take a look. If we look at the traditional model, this is David's slide. I'm giving him full credit for this particular slide. All right. So is it viable? Yes. But is it sustainable becomes the next question. Because there are a number of things on this slide which are worth noting. Number one, if we look at that big center, we're talking about healthcare professionals. But notice, to Vince's point, we have different kinds of healthcare professionals in here now. Nurse practitioners, which, by the way, I go back five years ago, most of you never even heard of. Go back 20 years ago, really didn't exist. So it's changing. There's a whole different group. If we look at that big arrow kind of underneath, we're looking at a whole section. Are there changes in accountability? Yes. Changes in access? Yes. Changes in technology? Yes. Changes in resources? Yes. So are there continuing changes which are occurring just in terms of what we have to work with? And the answer is yes. Are patients important in terms of health care decisions? And the answer now is yes. At one particular point in time, perhaps the answer was not really, not no. But now the answer is yes. Patients are critical and important. Things have changed. This particular slide asks us the question, and you'll notice right away, I'm betting, that there's a big box around one of these particular areas. Now, you'll notice that we've identified, okay, in terms of segmentation, evaluation in terms of segmentation, you know, which particular segment should be working with, and selecting, of course, that whole concept of targeting. Then there's that whole question of developing the types of communication that are needed. But that big box in the middle talks about understanding. Now, it's understanding from a specific perspective. It's understanding the buyer's consideration, not ours. It's about listening to specific customers and why they are doing what they're doing. What are the drivers of these particular uh, customers that we're dealing with? Now, again, we've got different kinds of customers at different stages. But bottom line, and David is indicating, and I agree with David, is that the, 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 the types of behaviors that people are having and will have, we need to understand them in order to be effective. Now. You go, hmm, that's interesting. How do I do that if I'm dealing with 50,000 physicians? Well, the answer is, in one sense, it's probably be very difficult. 
But one of the things that we realize is that we're moving to specialty pharmaceuticals. We're moving to markets which are much smaller, much more compact, and much more easier to, uh, to deal with and to understand and to listen. The number of physicians or nurses as individuals will decrease. So next question. There we go. What is your tolerance for risk and change? This is your tolerance for risk and change, those of you in the pharmaceutical industry. Is it low? I prefer to get it right every time and build on my past experience. Moderate? I prefer to not to do the same thing again. Or change is good. Vive la différence. Hmm, interesting, interesting. Which is actually quite interesting, actually, because one of the things... You know, who here has actually been in a product manager's office over the last, say, 20 years, or been a product manager in the last 20 years, and has been given a novel or a new way to communicate with physicians? Just show of hands, please. None of you. Excellent. Okay, good. Now, here's one of the interesting things, which is fascinating, because the first question a product manager asks is, where has it been tried before? What has been the success? So we're talking about having this change, this concept of tolerance for change and new and innovation. And the first question that's asked is, where has it been tried before? What has been the success when someone else used it? Ask yourself, really, is, are you open and tolerant to change and to risk, as you've indicated? Some of you will be. But there's a question. Again, risk. David has another great slide here, and it talks about innovation. So there are two definitions up here. One is from uh, GE, the, GAD, the GE definition, which basically says innovation is creativity and imagination applied to a business context. So something new into a business context. That concept of a new idea that can't be sold, well, it's a new idea, which is nice but it's not necessarily valuable within the context. Who here has ever heard of the Medici's? Yeah, yeah Medici's, we got some here. Can you tell me who the Medici's were? The first, the first families of Florence. And what did they do? They owned the world. And then what they did, they had lots of cash and else, and they invited people from all over the world, right? They invited different... Uh, disciplines and different languages and different races and and they had uh, philosophers and they had artists and they had them all in Florence okay have you ever been to Florence great place all right what came out of that 